Today, I'm gonna to be checking out a Schechter guitar. Every wave! Hey! Now this guitar in particular, let's open it up and see what it is. Put that here. And look at that. Wow. All right. So let's talk about what this guitar is. And I have it right here on my phone. <laughs> I wanted to pull up the specs. This is a brand new guitar. So this is not one I've dealt with in the past. In fact, this is my first time seeing it uh, this series is this year. So uh, let's talk about what it is that it has as features. So this is a roasted maple neck. Look at that. Pretty cool. So roasted maple, this is a five piece neck. My guess is the center is purple heart. Let's see what it says. It says roasted maple purple heart. Okay. Uh, so this is a five piece neck. You have roasted maple purple heart, roasted purple, roasted. And uh, with custom carbon fiber reinforcement rods. Very cool, kind of like what Kiesel does. This one is made in Indonesia. So this is not over the thousand dollar range. So this one looks like it's $7.99. So, so under a thousand dollars, they're Indonesia. And I think over a thousand dollars, they go to uh, South Korea. This one has, well, in fact, instead of guessing, I'm just gonna read it to you right now. Okay, it says it has a thin C neck. I think the thin C, when they use words like thin and thick and stuff like that, it really kind of conjures up thoughts. I think thin C, I was thinking it was gonna be real tiny. Um, thinner than an American standard Stratocaster neck. Definitely thinner, Sh same shape, the C shape's correct. I mean, it feels right. A little thinner, a little faster. When I think, uh, the closest thing I think most of you might've felt like this, it definitely reminds me of the 80s era uh, Fender Strats of Made in Japan, the 80s Made in Japan one, it's a little thinner. Just think of it like a Fender neck. If you're familiar with the Made in Mexico Fender neck, this car will feel very similar, but thinner. So a little faster, a little easier to play. Uh, 24 jumbo frets. These are not stainless steel, these are uh, nickel. I love the inlays. I love how they didn't get over the top <laughs> with this. In fact, that's a different kind of inlay. Now I'm sure I've seen it. Actually, I don't think I've seen it before. I was gonna say, I'm sure I've seen this before. This is this is something new. And I like it because it's not super gaudy. It doesn't, doesn't go over the top, especially with the spalted top. So let's go back to the next thing. We have 14 inch radius. So not 12, 14 flatter. So 14, again, kind of like Kiesel. Looks like Schecter's kind of going after that Kiesel market, uh, which is smart because that Kiesel market is growing uh, month after month. Um, so 14 inch radius fretboard, a little flat, a little flatter than what you would expect. So uh, Ibanez would usually be 16, a classical guitar would be 20. So obviously the bigger number, the flatter this fretboard. So think about classical as being the flattest at 20. The 16 is uh, what Ibanez is usually at. Um, Gibson would be a 12 inch, Fender would be nine and a half. Paul Ridge Smith be a 10 inch, this is 14. So a little flatter than a Gibson Les Paul. I don't know if you can feel that. It's got a Graftec ivory tusk nut. Obviously it's a prefabricated nut from Graftec. So I don't see any flaws. That's smart. They're just ordering a prefab. Two way adjustable truss rod. In other words, it's a biflex truss rod. You can, you can uh, pitch the neck back or forward. Uh, that's really important, especially uh, in today's day and age where everybody likes their setups really, really well. You'll notice the better truss rods are really good for people who really, players that really want their guitar to be perfect. Okay, so it's a satin natural finish. Yep, so it's all satin. It definitely has a, a, a clear coat on it. There is no natural. So notice they're saying satin, not natural. I mean, I can feel a uh, what feels like a polyurethane finish. Uh, and it kind of looks... I don't see sanding marks here, but when I look on the neck, I see the haze of the sanding. So I think they shot it on and then sanded this. It gives it a milky kind of look. And that's probably why at first when they said roasted maple, I was like, I didn't see that at first. The roasted is not very dark, which is something I've talked about before. And hopefully uh, you guys that have uh, tuning in back in will know what I'm talking about for those newcomers back to the show or newcomers to the show, I should say. Um, 
I like roasted necks, but I've learned is the more they roast them, the more the neck doesn't really feel or sound the way I like it to. So it gets a little too rigid, if that's any uh, way, too bright. Mahogany body, very cool. Uh, it looks like three pieces, but I can't tell. I, I mean, I see a seam here, so that's one piece. And I think I'm seeing one piece here and then one piece in the center. So three pieces. Usually you can tell from the side. I might be looking at another piece right here. So at least three pieces of mahogany. Some people have feelings about that. Some people are like, they don't like the multi-piece body. Me, I could care less. Um, I don't know why it doesn't bug me. It just doesn't. Baltic maple top, which we already know. It doesn't say, it doesn't say quarter inch. It doesn't say veneer. Um, the way I look at this uh, is, is, is it's probably a veneer. I would, if I'm a bedding man, it's a veneer on the top. Veneer meaning that the entire top is mahogany and then uh, they, they vacuum on this veneer on here. Now, the, I don't like it when they say top material spalted maple because that implies that it is a solid quarter inch or half inch maple top. Now, normally you would pull out the pickups and look, but in this case, we don't have to do that. Now for my purposes, let me go off screen and let me grab my, got my toolbox off site here. Let's get the flashlight. And so normally, like I said, we could take out the one of the pickups and look inside the cavity. But in this case, because they routed into the top, it is a veneer. So it is a veneer top. So. So veneer spalted maple top. So again, different feelings of that. Uh, my only complaint is if it's veneer, if it is veneer, it should always say veneer. And the reason is, is because I like to think of it like uh, when usually the rule, uh, I'll tell you guys, here's a rule I follow for myself. If you guys, uh, if it helps you out, I hope it helps you out. Um, if you're proud of it, they usually state it. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's guitars or food or uh, you know cars or any items. Uh, if somebody's proud of it, they state it. So in other words, you know, if a hot dog's all beef, they put all beef hot dogs. If it doesn't say all beef and you're like, it doesn't say, then it's probably not the all beef hot dog uh, because they usually state the thing they're proud of. So for instance, uh, if it says, um, uh, you know, solid top, they'll put solid top because they would want to, they would want to promote that, that is a solid top. Uh, so it doesn't say solid top. I hate that they're all doing that now. They're just saying, you know, spalted top or maple top and not saying veneer. Basically what I'm trying to say is, uh, if it doesn't say solid top, it's not solid. And that would be the rule I'd fall. Okay, follow. Uh, so uh, it's right-handed. It's an arch top, which we saw. It is a bolt-on neck. It's got a five piece bolt-on which we mean screwed in neck, because there's no bolts in here, it's all screws. Uh, so interesting, you know, kind of aesthetic with the car right there. I don't mind that at all. I'm, a, I'm a, actually a fan of bolt-on necks, uh, not for particular reasons. I don't have any like sustain comments or anything like that. Uh, I just trust that I can fix a bolt-on neck if anything goes wrong. You know, there's a lot of things you can do to it, uh, shim it, you know, sand it, change it. You can do a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, set necks are a little bit more problematic. I like the carve on the back right here. This is kind of cool, right? Again, uh, what I call the handshake where the the, uh, the neck meets the body is very good and here's why. The guitar feels pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm sure you're curious what weight it is. I'll have to go off screen. Okay. All righty. This is a big fish. Let's weigh it. 7.7 .7 pounds. Very reasonable. Very reasonable for sure. Uh, that's my sweet spot. It's in the high sevens to low eights. I love that weight range. Uh, just for my own personal comfort, I feel like nine pounds feels a little, a little heavy sometimes and six pounds feels like air. So I like the seven to eight range for me. Locking tuning keys and they're marked Schechter Wilkinson Bridge. I love this. I love the Wilkinson Bridge. I love the two tone, the black with the uh, the steel, not even chrome, just steel. Very cool. Uh, three way switch, tone and volume control. I'm assuming this is a coil split, but we will find out when we get to electronics. 
It says volume, two-way coil split, okay? So uh, coil split, which means when you flip it up, it's gonna make these single coils down his humbuckers. The pickups are very interesting looking. This is a new look you see more and more. Maybe it's a new old look. These are called Diamond 78 Specials. And what's interesting about that is, uh, that's a strange number. Anytime a company puts a number to something, it usually has some kind of reference. So I don't know if it's referring to 1978 when Schechter was like a parts company, or if they're referring to 78, and, and Seymour Duncan has a custom set of pickups called 78s that are essentially Van Halen pickups. A lot of people associate the 78 when termed with pickups as some kind of Van Halen sound. So I'm not sure on that, but maybe when we give it a playthrough, maybe I can put the multi-beat on there and see, look up to see what the 78 uh, Seymour Duncans are. Maybe that's what they're copied off of. So very cool. Let's check out, this is how it came. So again, I'm just using the box. Let's go ahead and see how they set it up. Now it almost was, it's in tune. Okay, so I measure off the top of the 12th fret. That's where I like to measure uh, for me. It's uh, one and a half millimeters. And then off the top of the third fret, and I would do this across all six strings, but for now I'm just doing a reference, and uh, it's 0.75 of a millimeter. Now I use millimeters, just something I use. I use the metric system. I don't like standard uh, for measuring this stuff. So for those of you that uh, into standard, you just have to Google the equation for that. Okay, so uh, action seems good. I would lower it just a hair, just a hair. I mean, literally I would take it to 1.25. So I mean, but it's ringing great. The top on this is sick. You know, uh, what I love about this is the top on this is so good. The guitar is so good out of the box that obviously it kind of feels like maybe they set this up for review, but I've said this many times, they do set up their guitars before they ship. What was missing though, and this is why I'm saying it could be for review, is usually Schecter has all these hang tags that say set up by so-and-so, and there's a sticker on the back, and all that stuff was missing. So Schecter might have sent the guitar straight. Sometimes they have a marketing department, and uh, this, is, uh, this just showed up. <laughs> I'm guessing it showed up because I did a bunch of videos called Best Guitars Under and I rated Schecter pretty well in one of those categories. So maybe Schecter's like, let's get him a guitar and see see how he rates a guitar. Uh, so let's see what comes in the goodie bag. Oh, I broke it. All right, you get the hang tag that says it's got a black tusk knot, nut, when it, and it doesn't. It has a white tusk nut, but still get the hang tag. You get the Ernie Ball tag that says that it came with Ernie Ball strings. You get some Allen wrenches, uh, four of those suckers. So uh, my guess is because the, the Wilkinson Tremolo has three, three different shapes. So all three, three, okay, there's four. One goes to your truss rod and three just go to the Wilkinson bridge and that's just how Wilkinson designed it. And then it has the Tremolo arm. Now the Wilkinson bridge Tremolo has an adjustment on the back. And so it's like a compression fit Tremolo but it also is uh, hollow in the middle of the of the arm, and there's a, uh, a screw inside there, and it just goes in and threads. So you can, uh, best of both worlds, you can thread it and have it in there, and then you can use this adjuster on the back to make it kind of firm and, and play right. This is a great guitar. So we're gonna definitely plug this in and check it out. We're gonna check out those pickups. Uh, I'll give you a sense of what I think of the playing of it, and, uh, We'll go from there. Okay, so I've tuned up and now we're ready. Couple things to note. The bridge pickup metered out at 15K and the next 8K. So a bit, essentially they're very close to what a JB Jazz or JB 59 set would be. So I'm thinking maybe that's more what their voice like. So we'll have to see. Again, there's not a whole lot of information on the pickups, but what's good news is we'll just use our ears so to start this sound sample, I'm gonna start with the cleans. I'm running through a Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb, and uh, let's get into that. We'll start with the neck pickup, and here we go. It's nice. Now, uh... Admit, 
It's not what I thought it was gonna sound like. It's got a lot more mids and highs. It's really defined and clear. I thought it was gonna be a little bassier. So let's go ahead and go to the single coil mode. What's weird is I love the single coil tone uh, in the coil split because, let's do it again. Coil split. It's, it's not a coil tap. So in other words, it's not cutting this, the uh, sound of the humbucker in half. It is coil split. But man, it doesn't sound as quacky as I would normally hear a single coil sound or kind of that, especially that, that coil split single coil kind of sound. So it's got that. Cool. Let's go. I'm gonna just compare them two. So here's the uh, the humbucker coil split. Very cool. I like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do something that I like to do, which is uh, coil split, neck pickup, and then turn the uh, tone control halfway back. So first, without the tone control. Turn back. Now we go to the middle position. Definitely can feel that hotter bridge pickup as they blend. Uh, here's the neck. And then here's the bridge. It's pushing the, the fender over. that is sometimes, especially in the single coil mode, watch what you can do. In the neck pickup, you'll get that kind of... And then when you want to kick in, go to the middle position and hit a little harder and get a... Out. Now you can do that with the humbuckers, but I bet it's just gonna break the amp over. So let's go to the uh, humbucker bridge position. Oh, you know what? It's not ear piercing. It's got a lot again, a lot of mids in this guitar. Not the sound I expected. Single coil. So now what I want to do is I want to give, see what it does for the rock sound, maybe the blues rock sound. And so I'm running a Marshall GMP 20 watt head. It's cranked right now. And uh, I have a little bit of reverb. Just, just a little bit in front of it. I mean, it's a hair on there. And uh, we're just gonna, just gonna check it out. Bridge pickup first, ready? Coil split on that bridge pickup. Here we go. Okay, so let's go to the neck pickup. Definitely fattens up from the bridge. Here we go. The neck adds more sustain, which is what you want. Now let's coil split the neck pickup. And definitely thins it out, a little less sustain. So now we're hooked up to my Archon, my PRS Archon amp, which is my high gain amp. And uh, we're gonna see, no reverb, no delay, just see what this thing can put out.
What I like about this is you get a lot of sustain off this neck pickup. <laughs> So a couple things to note before we go. The fit and finish on the guitar is great. The frets are rounded off. Uh, it uh, feels great. It has an ebony fretboard, which looks fantastic. Uh, and the headstock veneer, I didn't mention this, but the veneer is also spalted maple, matches the body. I like that they match the pickup rings to the cream uh, binding, which is also around the neck and the headstock. Again, it's kind of like a classy, kind of uh, 70s looking look to me. When I think of like some of the old BC Riches and some of the cool guitars that I've seen from the 70s that look great, the Deans, uh, and I think they've really kind of harkened back to that. But before we go, I definitely want to play the cleans a little bit more. <laughs> It's, again, I'm using very little reverb, just the 65 uh, amp with just a little reverb. What I love about the guitar is, sure, it feels like a Strat. If you're holding it, it's got a very Strat vibe, um, but it's got crap tons of sustain. And I have the volume just turned back halfway. Let me go back full. This is full forward. So there you go. A couple things to note that I thought was interesting is I've been trying to think about this whole time doing this review. You know, what is it competing against? And it's competing against obviously LTD, uh, but actually, believe it or not, I think it's competing against higher end Epiphones, uh, definitely competing against uh, what uh, Ibanez is doing with like the AZ series where you have, this is a roasted neck, but it's multiply. If you look at the two guitars, here's what's interesting. The Indonesian made Ibanez's that are roasted necks, they have stainless steel frets, they have a gig bag, and they use Seymour Duncan pickups. However, this guitar has a $300 less selling price and has a really cool multi-laminate neck, which I think is a cool feature. I like the locking keys over what Ibanez is doing, although both quality keys on both guitars, I like the feature of this having the lock on the back. Um, I like the Wilkinson Bridge just as much as the Goto, I, but I love the aesthetics of this, and that's what really Schechter's nailed. They've gotten the aesthetics down. This, I think, is a cooler looking guitar than what I've seen a lot of manufacturers do. Again, this amber looks great. It's something different. Each one's gonna be a kind of its own little work of art uh, because of the spalted maple. Spalted maple, or the spalting in the maple, is a disease, so it's like this little, these little lines are, are gonna be totally different every piece of wood. And that's what's going to make this exciting is that, you know, no two guitars are going to be the same. Really cool. But I got to say, I love all the carbs and the way this feels. It's so comfortable. On that note, I'll let you guys go. If you're new to the channel, uh, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you're returning to the channel and you've subscribed already, make sure you hit that bell notification because uh, that way you get notified when the videos are coming out. Also, I want to thank everyone for their time. And as always, till the next time, know your gear.